This video is meant to help you if you and your partner both have family leave that you're planning on taking in the near future. So if you live in Washington State or California State, there is state family leave that's available to you. In the description I can provide a link so you can get more information about Washington State family leave and how to get started on the process for that. Some people don't live in Washington State or California, but have family leave available to them through other programs through their employer, so this is something that might help you as well. I'll tell you what would be a good idea, and then if you're interested, I'll tell you what I did and why it was crazy. So the first week that you have a brand new baby, you are going to be very tired. And the first week that you have your brand new baby in the state of Washington, that's considered a waiting week. So the first week you're not entitled to any leave. It's just you'll be taking it unpaid from your employer, from the state, just in general. And then after that, a mother who has given birth either through cesarean or a traditional birth has 16 weeks of maternity leave available to them and a spouse has 12 weeks of family leave available to them. So what I would recommend doing is considering staggering or alternating the family leave. The best approach I think would be for the mother to take the first stretch of family leave. Maybe if you take all 16 weeks at once that's an option and then the partner can take their 12 weeks afterwards. Or another thing that you can do is take off the first week together, maybe take off a couple of weeks together and then take turns. So the mother, you know, would have four weeks at home with the baby and then the partner would have hmm, four weeks home with the baby and you could go back and forth like that. The reason why I would recommend alternating the leave stints and taking turns rather than taking it all at once is because then you can maximize the amount of time that you can stay home with the baby without having to pay for childcare. When I first had my baby, I was a full-time student, I was working full-time, and I had no idea what it was going to be like to be a mother. So my intention was to stay at work, and we, my husband and I, took turns staying home with the baby in order to maximize the amount of time that we could stay home with the baby before we had to put them in daycare. I know that a lot of new mothers after three months are heartbroken because they have to put their baby in daycare and they're not quite ready yet. And this allowed us to go for six months without having to put the baby into a daycare facility. We did eventually, after those six months, put the baby in a daycare facility, which was quite fine and I was very lucky to have found a nice daycare near my office and everything was cool. But this did allow us to save, let's say, $1,200 a month times three months, $3,600, which was some substantial amount of money that we could use for other things. So that's why I would recommend it. What we did that was crazy, if you're curious, is after a few weeks of staying home with the baby, my husband and I went back and forth one week on, one week off. And I wouldn't recommend going back to work after a few weeks after having a new baby when you're a brand new mother. I didn't know anything about having a baby when I signed up for that and I just found that I was pretty tired at work. It wasn't bad because my employer is cool, my job was fantastic, I was close to home and close to the nursery and I had a lot of perks in my favor but I just wouldn't recommend that for most people. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel as I could really use the support. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments, and I'll go ahead and include that link for the information on Washington State Family Leave. I wish you the best of luck on your journey.